Hello my friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video I'll be describing to you what 6D BIM is all about. BIM can be of great help to ensure that your building from the design stage um, throughout all of its life cycle is compliant with energy and water conservation requirements. This is however just one application of what can be done through a sustainability analysis uh, conducted using BIM. Other uses of 6D BIM include the optimization of your building orientation, uh, optimizing the building shape and the building uh, size, uh, choice of material that you will be adopting in the building, the window sizing and glazing, the window shading, solar panel design, installation of these solar panels to maximize sunlight, and hence reduce energy requirements, and the list goes on. What sort of uh, sustainability analysis can we perform using 6D BIM. We can use BIM to help guide our decision making in the sustainability life cycle assessment of a building. Specifically, I will mention four types of sustainability analysis that I had conducted on building projects in the past through the use of 6D BIM. Number one, deciding on building design parameters that ensure a passive design, thus enabling the use of natural resources uh, for heating and for cooling. An example of these natural uh, sources would be your sun uh, and say uh, wind as well. Here you are looking at optimizing say the orientation of the building, the window to wall ratio, the uh, window glass type, etc. So all these building parameters in order to increase uh, let's say natural ventilation and daylight. This is very important to conduct early on in the design process. Second application is enhancing the selection of appropriate mechanical systems that have low energy cost requirements through the use of simulations. This can help reduce operating cost of the building through reducing the electricity that's required to power the building. And the third application is simulating the app of renewable sources of energy such as solar panels to allow you to better optimize uh, their designs. And the fourth application is using BIM to calculate the number of points that your project acquires on a green star rating system. You can also integrate your project with other interfaces to allow you to conduct data analytics for smart city planning, say for example, and building performance assessment once the building starts operating. So these were all nice points. But the important question is, how do you implement 6D BIM? Take, for instance, Revit. If you want to conduct an energy analysis to figure out the energy consumption of the building during summer and winter, you can convert the RVT file that you have, your, your Revit model, into GBXML file format. So that's a, it's a, a separate uh, file format. And then you can send that GBXML file to, let's say, Energy Plus, which is an energy simulation software in order to conduct your energy analysis. You can convert your Revit file uh, as well into, let's say, FBX format and then send it to, uh, for instance, a software such as Autodesk CFD Ultimate in order to conduct airflow simulations. You can also integrate the BIM model with Autodesk CFD to decide on HVAC systems and their operations through understanding and visualizing the invisible properties of air moving about a building. These are all integrations that can be made possible directly uh, through using the 3D BIM model that you had built in the BIM platform. It's therefore important to ensure that the model is set up to allow for such analyses to take place. Let's now have a look at a common application of 6D BIM. As I discussed earlier, you can implement 6D BIM to optimize the design of your buildings, ensuring that you make use of natural energy sources to run your building. BIM can help you achieve this through allowing you to assess the impacts of glazing options that you choose for your window, for example. You can also use BIM to simulate a solar analysis and thus identify the surfaces 
that will receive the highest level of solar energy. These surfaces will then be what you can use for placing your solar panels on for generating electricity. You can also use the solar analysis to find which sides of the building would require shading to ensure comfort for building occupants. You can use BIM to also conduct a simulation of the thermal massing in the building. Now thermal massing is the ability of a material to absorb and store heat energy. You can thus optimize the choice of your materials for your slab, for instance, to determine an appropriate uh, material choice that will store the highest amount of heat during the day and then release that energy during the night in cool climates. Doing so uh, means that you will be relying less on heaters during the winter nights and you can therefore reduce operating costs of your building. Now finally BIM can help in reducing the impact of the urban heat island uh, effect uh, through guiding decision makers on uh, landscaping, say for instance, to adopt for projects. Here we are talking about you know, green spaces to cool down the temperature in concrete dense cities. F for those that are interested to explore further about how 60 BIM is actually utilized in the construction industry. Do check out the uh, following studies that I uh, had published in the past. You can see a list of them uh, on the screen in front of you. Let me now demonstrate to you how you would conduct an energy analysis in a BIM platform. To start, you need the BIM model, so the 3D BIM model. Next, you need to specify the material properties associated with each element in your project. You then need to define your internal spaces in the building for the analysis, along with defining what type of building uh, you are considering. Uh, this is very important because building, because uh, you know, for your building, let's say an office, um, you would have different uh, energy requirements compared to say a restaurant or a residential building. You then need to specify what the location of the project is and this is important because the climate and the sun path in Sydney say for example is different to that in Dubai. You also need to specify the operating hours of the building. A building that operates for 24 hours will of course utilize more energy than one that operates for only six or eight hours. The HVAC system which will will be uh, using the most energy in the building needs to also be defined. So you have to define that as a major step in this, in this process. Uh, now after you define uh, your HVAC system, you can start the energy analysis by creating the building analytical model and then running the energy simulation. So as you notice, it's a, a very systematic procedure where all steps in the process are essential in order to obtain accurate energy simulation results for your building. The results that are produced in the energy analysis will enable you to view what the energy requirement for operating the building is, in addition to uh, the carbon emissions that result from the building operation and the impacts of window sizes and materials, uh, for example, that are used in the building on the energy profile of your project. In terms of uh, solar analysis, the process contains a number of steps again. As usual, you would start with the 3D BIM model, then you specify the project location and you select the surfaces in the building that you want to conduct the analysis on. If you're interested in installing uh, solar panels in your project, then these surfaces will be your roof and your exterior walls. Next, you need to specify the uh, metrics that you would be uh, adopting in the, in the analysis. For example, is it cumulative solar energy or is it cumulative solar analysis that you're after uh, per year or is it the peak hour solar energy that you wish to derive? You then set up the analysis grid to allow for the simulation to be carried out uh, an important point here is that a fine grid 
will result in a more accurate solar analysis on each surface selected, though the computational time will be longer. So you need to decide on this trade-off. If you require quick results, say for example, then you need to use a more sparse grid mesh for the simulation on each of the building surfaces that are analysed. But you have to know that the results probably won't be as accurate in this case. You would then define the sun settings. These are important for sun path, solar studies, walkthroughs and rendered images that you would probably want to produce for your project. Additionally, you would need to set up your solar analysis style. For example, um, are you after uh, a solar uh, energy annual PV analysis or are you just interested in a customizable simulation for general solar uh, installation studies? So once you decide on that, you can start your uh, solar analysis. In front of you, you can see uh, what to expect in terms of the results that you generate from a solar analysis in 6D BIM. As you can see, the building surfaces that will receive the highest level of uh, solar energy are the ones highlighted in yellow, as opposed to ones that receive the least highlighted in blue. Uh, the scale that's next to the building helps you determine the exact solar energy received by the surface. One thing to note about this solar analysis in BIM is that you need to define the location of the building to obtain an accurate estimate. The location will determine the, the sun path uh, for, that, for that specific uh, area or location and the season in the year will also impact the, the sun path. So in summer, um, for example, the sun path happens to be higher than in winter and this can affect the surfaces that receive the highest level of solar energy. So that's an important point to uh, be aware of. Okay, so that was it for this uh, video, my friends. I hope you now understand how 6D BIM is utilized in the construction industry. Don't forget to like the video. Peace.